somebody give God the biggest hand clap of praise you got in you today. Thank the Lord you got the energy to even be at church, amen. Thank you, praise man. Children will be remaining with us this morning. But young folks, you will, I believe, enjoy talking about heaven today. So every age group, you're going to get fed today. Oh, praise the Lord God Almighty. Sometimes, Sister Deborah, I feel like electricity is going all through my body, and I feel it right now. I feel him. Amen. He's so precious. He's so precious to us. God is so good. Would you turn to at least two people and tell them God sure is good? <clears throat> now, you don't have to be a certain age to, to do that. If you're five years old, you can still look at a grandmama or granddaddy or daddy and say, God is still good. Well, all ages. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Whew. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be in service with all of you. Wonderful looking crowd today. I'm honored to have you. There's some that I have never met until today, and I want to tell you, although we don't really know each other well, I want to tell you I love you. And that comes from the heart of God. I love you. And for those of you who I do know well, I love you. And I appreciate the opportunity to pour into God's people. Here's a part where that you have a vital role to play in any message that is preached in this building, and that is prayer. I am asking that you would pray for your pastor. If I'm not your pastor, pray for me as the minister for the hour and say, God, anoint him to speak directly to me today. Ooh, I, I feel him, church. I feel the Lord. And I believe God's going to talk to some people today. He always does, doesn't he? Would you pray right now? Let's, let's join together. Oh, God. Lord, we are so honored that you're here with us. Oh, God, we praise you. Lord, I don't always know what you want to do. I just, I make myself available. And everyone in this building, I pray, God, that would be their desire too, that they just make themselves available right now for you to do whatever you want to do. God, you know so much better than we know. You're so much wiser. You're infinitely wise, omnipotent, omniscient. And God, we just rely so heavily upon you. Today, Lord Jesus, as I share what I believe you've placed upon my heart, I ask that, God, you would anoint me as a vessel. Thank you, Jesus. Hear my voice, says the Lord. I am pouring out living water even among you now. Reach up unto me, for I alone can satisfy your thirsty soul. Bring your dry hearts, your coldness unto me, for my living water shall satisfy you. You have tried so many things from this world, and all have come to naught. But I tell you this day, the eternal part of you, that soul I place within you, you hunger and thirst after that which the world cannot meet. I tell you, I alone am living water. Reach unto me this day, for I will fill you, says the Lord. Somebody needs to be reaching up right now. You say, well, does it matter if it's in the flesh with my hand? I don't care about that part. God wants your heart. God wants your heart reaching up to him right now. Somebody came thirsty today. Somebody came dry today. Oh, it's been a while since the Lord's moved. It's been a while since you felt that precious anointing flowing over you. And God says, I've come to pour out that living water. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My Lord, I feel this with everything within me. If God's talking to you, I want you to stand right where you are. You're not going to come to the altar. 
You're not going to come to the altar. But if you feel God's speaking to me, God's, I feel God's telling me he's ready to pour out in me. Would you stand up where you are? My Lord, I feel at least five people right now. I believe at least five people. God says, I'm about to pour out on them if they'll just stand for me. They'll stand for me. I'm not going to call you up here. I'm not going to ask you to do, say a word. But right now, I want you to let God pour out my Lord. Church, if there's anybody close to you, don't worry about laying hands on them. Just start praying for them right now. Say, God, go ahead and pour. Go ahead and pour right out of the heavens. My God, he's moving right now. Woo. You who are standing, ask the Lord for whatever you need right now. Some of you need a financial miracle. Some of you need a miracle of the heart. You've been hurt. You've been wounded. God's bringing healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. Some need healing in your bodies. I declare in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost that healing virtue is flowing in this building right now. Oh, come on, church. God's using your prayers. He's using you right now. He's listening to your faith. Yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise you. We praise you. Church, give the Lord a hand for what he's doing right now. Let's just praise him. Oh, God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. When you come to church, this is what you hope for. You hope for an encounter with the God who created you. Oh, I tell you, I don't care who you are. It's easy to get caught up in the, uh, the traditions of what we do. It's easy to get caught up in our programs. And sometimes God says, hey, pause what you had planned because I've got something better to do than what you thought. And that's why we always have to be sensitive to the move of God's spirit. And when you're a Christian and when you're saved, there's a peace inside you that lets you know what God, what's happening right now is real and God is in it and God will give you that peace when you've got a personal relationship with him and I'm so thankful for that. Well, praise the Lord. God's moving already, isn't he? Oh, hallelujah. I want to speak to you for just a few moments about heaven. Won't it be wonderful there? I tend to go back in time many times, Richard, when I'm preaching from this pulpit and I, I go back to when I was a boy in my mind and I remember testimony services, whoo, glory to God, where the people stood up and, and I don't know, Sister Angie, I praise God for you. You're willing to stand up and testify many times, but I remember how the old saints would stand up and say, Pastor, I just want to say how glad I am to be saved, sanctified, and filled with heaven's sweet Holy Ghost. I'm glad my name's written in the Lamb's book of life and I'm on my way to glory. I'm here to tell you, the old time saints, they knew about heaven. I remember having a conversation with a, a person. I won't dare say who because I wouldn't want to uh, cast a negative light upon this individual, but I remember they were talking about modern praise and worship versus some of the old hymns, and trust me, I have no issue with either. I'm not, I don't want to say one's right and one's wrong because that's not accurate. God works in all styles of music if the heart is right. Amen. But I remember we were having a conversation. The gentleman was saying, you know, back when I was a boy, he said that everything seemed to be about heaven, singing about heaven. And it's like they had uh, no, no true thought of, of earth and working here on earth. And I know that wasn't accurate. I know the old time saints, their focus was on this earth. But what struck me was he was saying, you know, now we're moving into a, a time period where it's all just worship, worship, worship. And again, that's great. But I believe you need to be balanced. And I believe there's a time for praise, a time for worship, and a time for testimony where that even your songs reflect your joy in knowing you're going one day to be with Jesus. And it's a wonderful thing to sing, to shout, to uh, shake all about, as they used to say, and rejoice in the fact that we're going to go be with the Lord. I want to share a very powerful statement from C.S. Lewis. Most of you know that name. He had a hand in movies and writings and books. And there was one book he wrote called Mere, M-E-R-E, Mere Christianity. And this is what he said. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Isn't that amazing? 
what revelation it is. That when you get your mind off of where you're going, off of your destination, oftentimes it will, afflict, it, it will reflect in how you proceed in today's journey. The way you walk the path must be governed by what you're expecting and looking forward to in that great by and by. Because I know, Gibby, that Jesus Christ is coming back at any moment, it causes my life to reflect him more accurately. Because I know that God and his spirit are dwelling within me and within you, it causes me to uh, reflect his attitude and characteristics with everyone I speak with. You see, Brother Randall, it's a whole lot easier to show love and compassion to those in need when I do not look at them through my human eyes, but I look at them through the eyes of a loving, compassionate God. And the more I think about Jesus and about the coming of the Lord, the easier it is to live holy while I wait for him. Can I get an amen? So I want to talk about heaven. <clears throat> We've answered a lot of questions thus far in this sermon series. And today I want to ask the question, Will we have to wait millions of years in order to finally reach our point at, in front of the throne and speak to God? I answer that with a scripture found in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And most of you would not think this relates to heaven, but indeed it does. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Listen to this. <clears throat> now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything... According to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now you say, well, I don't hear anything about heaven in that scripture, and you would be correct. But let me show you how it relates to standing before the throne room. According to this scripture, every Christian on earth could pray to God at the exact same second of that day, and God guarantees he will hear us. Many of us pray during the week and we're not around other folks from our church or family and we don't realize it, but some of your church family are praying at that exact moment. You don't know it, but God does. And guess what God said? He said, I'm hearing people in Atala. I'm listening to Christians over in East Taboga, Alabama. I'm listening in Talladega, Rainbow City, Southside, Gadsden, all of Etowah County, Birmingham, Atlanta, Baltimore. I'm listening in Washington, D.C. from the halls of the Capitol building. I'm listening to people in India, Ethiopia, Africa, my Lord, all the way over in Europe and Asia and, and all of the Middle East. He said, when my people call out my name, he said, I hear their prayers. So here Here's what I present to you, that once you reach heaven, perhaps there could be a physical moment in your soul and new body where that you approach heaven's throne and perhaps you could have that moment being standing before God physically. But I am here to present this as evidence that I believe that no matter where you are, you could be all the way 15 million light years across the universe once we go to heaven and God may start sending it out on, we don't know what he'll have us to do, but on certain tasks. But wherever you are, God is there. Oh, hallelujah. You say, why should it change when we get to heaven if God can hear all of us right now? Some of you were praying a few minutes ago, and if God had problems with keeping up with folks, he would have said, hey, slow down. I just need one of you folks at New Haven praying at a time. But he doesn't do that. He enjoys all of his people presenting a sacrifice of praise and offering prayers of intercession even at the same time. So if God can handle that much, we talk about multitasking, our God is a multitasker. If you're a multitasker, guess who you got that from? The Lord, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. God will be able to be, or will be accessible at all times. Will we have the same name once we get to heaven? Let's go to Revelation chapter two, verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone, a new name. Somebody say, a new name. New name. Some of you have regretted the name your parents gave you from the time you understood what it was. And you said, boy, I wish mom and daddy would not have named me that. Some folks even change their names or they go by nicknames because they do not prefer their official name on the birth certificate. Well, I've got good news. God's got you one even better picked out in glory. He said, a new name which no one knows 
except him who receives it. God has a new name that will suit you perfectly. I want to look to the book of Revelation chapter 4, speaking of the current heaven. And if you were with us last week, you remember I spoke of a new heaven and a new earth. And some scripture refers specifically to the new heaven. So it's good to be able to differentiate between the two. Right now, this speaks of current heaven. It says, Immediately I was in the Spirit. This is John. We call him John the Revelator. He was also John the disciple of Jesus. And he says, And behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Does anyone remember the story of Noah? Maybe you've got one of those cute rugs on your floor with an ark and a bunch of animals and beautiful rainbow. Maybe you've got a picture hanging somewhere. But most of us have seen those beautiful pictures about Noah and Noah's ark and all the animals. And what was so interesting to me was that once God made covenant with Noah and all mankind, he said, I'm going to put a symbol of my covenant with you that I'll never destroy uh, humanity and all living things on earth by a flood again. He said that symbol is going to be a what? A rainbow. So every time you see a rainbow in the sky, understand God is once again saying, remember my covenant. Remember what I promised you that I will preserve, I will protect you. But here's what I want you to see that's interesting. Most of us did not really put it together that when God placed the rainbow in the sky, what he was doing was giving us a little glimpse of heaven. Isn't that interesting? Because based on John the Revelator's vision and what he saw, he said there is a gigantic rainbow around the throne of God. So when God sent that rainbow as covenant, he said, I'm going to let earth get a little taste of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Let's continue to read. Around the throne, there were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Now, <clears throat> Richard Jeffers and Tricia and their family were here cleaning last night, and I was talking to them about something that had happened this past week. And out of nowhere, I hear it sounds like somebody took about a 93 million ton bucket of water and dumped it right on Southside, Alabama. I understand it was hitting more than one place, but I, I looked at Richard. I said, "What is that?" <laughs> He said, it's rain. <laughs> and so I go to the front doors, and we see the KFC sign getting ripped off. Uh, the light part was still there, but the, the colored logo sign getting ripped off. When there's a trash can flying across Highway 77, cars are having to swerve and miss it. I'm like, my goodness. And, I, and we started telling all the children, get away from the windows. No, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. It was a dangerous thing. There was uh, thunderings and storms and winds and, and rain, and it was kind of scary. But understand that with God, as we see and understand heaven, it says that the throne itself proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. God knows how to put on a light show with the ultimate sound system. Can I get an amen? Our God knows what he's doing. We still have yet to develop a subwoofer on earth that comes anywhere close to producing the output of thunder in the sky. God's got this. Hallelujah. I want to talk about our rewards. What about rewards in heaven? The Bible tells at least of five different types of crowns that we will receive. The scriptures will not appear on the screen, but I'll just briefly mention them. Number one, the crown of life found in James 1 verse 12. Number two, an incorruptible crown found in 1 Corinthians 9 25. There's also a crown of righteousness in 2 Timothy 4 and 8. A crown of glory in 1 Peter 5, verse 4. And finally, the Bible tells us of a crown of rejoicing in 1 Thessalonians 2, 19. You know what this tells me? That God's got rewards for you. Isn't that amazing? Now, some of you already, especially the children, are probably thinking, now, wait, Pastor, how am I going to fit three or four crowns on top of one another? I mean, we're talking Jenga or something like heaven's version of Jenga here. I, I don't know. There's a little game that Roxy Jane's got. Is she in here? Maybe Chloe's or Roxy Jane, but we'll play it, and it's a balance of things. you got these little pegs you put on top of each other, and whoever puts the one that tilts the whole thing, they all fall, then you lose. So I don't know, Richard. Some people may be playing that game in heaven with their crowns. I, I'm not sure. I like to have a little humor sometimes when I talk about the, the word. But we are going to be rewarded by God. 
It's amazing that he cares enough about us that he says, I want to, I want to brag on you. Isn't that amazing? We understand fully that our attention would be toward our, our God. Well, I can hardly wait to get there just to see him. I want to worship him. You want to praise him. But God turns around just like we do with our children. He says, I want to bless you back. I want, to, I want to show everybody up here what a wonderful gift you were to humanity. I want to bless my people. And that's what God's going to do. Let's continue reading from Revelation chapter 4. Did anybody know there's fire in heaven? You say, wait a minute, I thought that was just another place. No, there's fire in heaven. Here we go. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. Oh, it's getting descriptive here. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, a second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night. Chloe, go ahead and prepare that video. I should have told you about 30 seconds ago. It says, and they do not rest day or night. And here's what they're saying. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Chloe's going to share a video that my wife posted on Facebook this week and got me fired up. And it's these very words that I just read. Hope you enjoy this. Thank you. 
Somebody just clap and praise unto God. He's so good. One day you'll have an opportunity to be part of that song. As the scripture said, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. He is the great I am. Oh, I I just wanted to, to play that. It just touched me so much this past week, but just to show you just a glimpse of when God's people come together and when we combine our voices in heaven with the angels, one day imagine that course. Oh, glory to God. I've, you know, so many times I'm, I question, Lord, how in the world am I even going to be able to stand up? You know, there's a, a scripture that talks about us laying our crowns and the 24 elders, they lay their crowns before the king of kings, before the lamb. What an amazing, amazing thing that's going to be. 
when we have that opportunity to be with Jesus. Church, I want you to be encouraged. Jesus is coming. And I know I've said it many times, but that places a mandate upon the people of God. What is that mandate? It is this. Number one, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. How do we do that? Well, there's a lot of ways we do it, but one of the most important seeds you'll ever plant is the seed of the gospel witness. If you really love your neighbor, if you really love people, if you really want people to enjoy eternity with Jesus, then it begins by you sharing the gospel. I know that sometimes it is so difficult. I know at school, at work, at home sometimes, it feels so uncomfortable. But trust me, every sacrifice you make will be worth someone's eternity. Amen. No matter what it takes, please be willing to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Show people love. Bless individuals. I want to continue. I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 6. I want to read from verses 20 and 21. Matthew chapter 6, verses 20 and 21. It says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Lord tells us that there are treasures that we can lay up in heaven. You say, what will be there? Well, some of what will be there is your accomplishments and the treasures and things you have done. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 through 15. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. There are many things you can do for the Lord. I've mentioned several. But as I said just a moment ago, one of the greatest things you could ever lay up in heaven is the witness and the testimony that you shared the gospel and souls are there. Anybody remember that song by Ray Bolts? Thank you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. He said, I had a dream and a man came up and was saying, I'm only here because of you sharing uh, Jesus with me. And how true, even though that was a song, how true that really is that I believe there will be individuals who will come walking up to you. And some of you say, well, I've really not done a lot for the Lord, but there's been times you've shared through your witness, through your life, and you had no idea people were watching you. Oh, I feel this right now. But there'll be people who will approach you in heaven. And they, they may say, you didn't even really know me but I heard a word you spoke. I, there was a time you stood up and you sang when one of those, if this was the 80s, they'd say when, when one of those tracks, those cassette tapes, they stuck it back there in the PA system and you stood up with one of those old microphones that had a short in it, it'd go in and out every so often, but you sang it with all your heart and it touched my soul and I asked the Lord to save me. It may be a time where that you were in school and a classmate was watching you and everybody else in the class was, te was cheating because the teacher had stepped out and they looked over at you and said, here, I've got the answers. Would you like to copy so you can make an A? And you'd say, well, no, I've studied. I'm not going to cheat. I don't believe that's right. I want to please God more than to make sure I get every answer correct by cheating. And maybe it was an instant, that instance that small that so grasped the heart of one of your classmates that they say, I'm here today, whether you knew it or not, because of the stand you took. Perhaps at the end of the year, as some of you are, uh, you buy the yearbooks and the annuals and you have friends to sign them. And perhaps some of them will sign and say, you'll never know what an impact you've made on my life because you stood for Jesus this year. And I appreciate it. I didn't do everything I should have, but thank you that you were a witness for me. There are people that you work with right now. We were talking in Sunday school about some of this. There are folks who are watching you. They're waiting to see how you will respond when it comes to attacks and when it comes to stress and things not going the way you would prefer at work. Maybe the boss does some things you don't agree with, but instead of running the boss down, you say, let's pray for her or pray for him. Let's encourage that 
employer to do better. And maybe one day some of those co-workers will come walking up to you behind heaven's gates and they'll say, because of your witness and your stand for Jesus, I am here today. Thank you for giving to the Lord and for pouring into my life. I've got one more scripture. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Understand that everything you do matters to God. Listen to this. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was opened, and it, was, it is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. There are books being written about you. You may never see them on the bestseller list of the New York Times. You may never have a, a big book signing at a local uh, bookstore and your poster be beside you and hundreds of people asking for your signature. But there is a book being written about your life and all the good that you'll ever do, God's keeping record. Say, Pastor, what if I sin? You know what the Bible says about sin? As long as you ask the Lord to forgive you, as long as you repent. You know what the Bible says? He says, I've removed your transgressions from you as far, my Lord, as far. Somebody ought to shout just on that. If you didn't shout on nothing else I said this morning, you should have shouted when I said that. That when you repent, you ask God to forgive you. You allow him to wash you with the blood of Jesus. You know what happens? Your transgressions, your sins are removed from, my Lord, are removed from us as far as the east is from the west. That's an exciting thing. So when God reveals the works of our life, he's going to, as Christians, as saints of God, he's going to talk about all the times that you obeyed, all the times you did what he asked, and God is going to reward his people. Stand with me. Go ahead and cut those lights up, Chloe. Thank you for what you're doing back there. And I want to dismiss in prayer. We're going to bless the food. Everyone, please join us for our Thanksgiving meal that we'll have. If you go through those double doors, turn right, and they'll be toward the back. But we're going to pray blessings over the food, and then I'm going to pray over you. Yes, ma'am, you got an announcement.